talk about analyzing data back here. Okay, it says Madison took five quizzes this semester. Her score on the quizzes are as follows. Quiz one got an 86. And I'm going to start filling in this table below because we need to make a table from the data. Uh, got an 86 for quiz one, got a 96, 92 for quiz two, a 78 for quiz three, an 86 for quiz four, and an 84 for quiz five. Determine the domain and range. Well, let's just write it down. We know domain is X, right? So if domain is X, we're going to we're going to go ahead and just write it down. One, two, three, four, and five. And look at our range. Let's just write it down. 86, 92, 78, 86, and 84. Now, you'll notice these kind of suddenly appeared. It's because in a new rendition of these lessons, since I since printed out this one, uh, I've added this in there. But what is my minimum value of x? My minimum value is 1. What is my maximum value? It's 5. I'm going from 1 to 5. Okay. What is my minimum value of my range or my y value? Well, let's see. Is it 78? Looks like 78. And what's my maximum value? Is it 92? Can anything beat 92? Nope, it's 92. Okay, so just looking at this, guys, let's let's go for it. Uh, I really just need to go from, if you look at it, I could say for my x's, I need to go just from 0 to 5. For my Minimum here, I would almost say go. I can go from 70 to 100, which is 70, 80, 90, 100. That's just four values, really. And since I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I'm just going to say every two tick marks. We're going to start off right here at 70. On the Y and on the X, it's going to be zero. And notice I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Honestly, I'm just counting how many tick marks I have. If I'm looking at scale, guys, I don't want to just do one, two, three, four, five. I have all this empty space. I'm going to say every two along this axis, every one. So one, two is going to be one, two is going to be two, three, four, five. I only need to go up to five. But see how I use a bunch of the axis because I'm doing it every two. And then I'm going to say every two is another 10. So 70, 80, 90, and let's go up to 100. I probably could have done every three just about, but no need. All right, and notice I'm only doing the arrow in one direction on either one of these. Why is that? Because I'm not going anywhere below. These are where my scores lie. So let's go ahead and graph this bad boy and see what we get. I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, uh... oh, and I forgot to label it. These are days. Oh, no, excuse me. These are not. This is a quiz number. I need to pay attention. And on the side, we're doing score. Okay. I know I'm kind of skipping ahead and doing graphing first, but it's because I wanted to go ahead and use this data as best I could. Uh, let's just put in what we got. We know on day one, what did we get? Day one was an 86. So day one, I'm up here 80, 85, 86 is about right there. We have to estimate a little bit, but not bad. Day two is a 92. 90, 91, 92 is about right there. Uh, quiz number three, not day, I keep saying day, but quiz three is a 78. Ooh, so that's down here, 80, a little bit below 80. Quiz four, we got an 86, back up again. And quiz five was an 84, so a little bit below it. Okay. Keep in mind also that these are discrete values, right? Uh, which, 
Oh, we haven't talked about that yet. But just know this is going to be called a discrete function because they don't connect there. But let's go ahead and write these down. Let's go back here to domain. What's my domain again? It's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my range is 86, uh, 92, 78. I'm not going to write 86 again because we only write them down once each. So then 84. And this is how it's going to go. Quiz 1 is 86. Quiz 2 is 92. Quiz 3 is 78. Quiz 4 is 86 again. We'll just draw that arrow up here. And then quiz 5 is 84. Notice this is a function because each x has only one y. And then writing these down as ordered pairs is super easy. It's just writing it down, right? x and y. 186, 292, 378, 486, and 584. And notice, what do we look for? No repeats in the x. Again, this is a function. Same thing here. If I look at this, no matter where I draw a vertical line, right, it's still working out as a function. Okay, we're going to talk about function notation. Let's go back to our vocab real quick. Oh. Okay, go ahead and write down function notation. It's a way of writing an equation so that y equals f of x. We'll talk about that. So pause this, write it down, ready, set, let's get back to our regular scheduled program. Here's really what it comes down to, guys. Look at the equation, y equals 5x minus 3. To change that to a function, we simply say f of x equals 5x minus 3. Now, at times, I'm going to have more than one function. So again, let's look at the equation. y equals 2 thirds x plus 12. I could write it as g of x, just to differentiate it, is 2 thirds x plus 12. f of x and g of x, they both are just function notation. They're just denoting different functions, okay? And let's look at another function. Uh, y equals 14x plus 8 is the equation because it's in y form. Now, as a function, let's write it as h of x equals 14x plus 8. The reason why we don't keep writing f of x is you'll see down here in a minute. Uh, sometimes, or actually you won't really see it right here, but sometimes we're going to use more than one function and combine them together. Here I'm just combining the same function, but we can combine different functions. And this allows us to know which function we're looking at by just using a different form there. And I'll show you why we have the of x right here. So let's take a look at this. I'm saying, look at the function, three x squared, f of x equals three x squared plus 12 x plus nine. When I write f of negative eight, notice that is instead of f of x, I've written f of negative eight. That means I'm gonna plug in negative eight for x. So let's solve this. I'm gonna have f of negative eight equals, zoom in so it's easier to see, 3 times negative 8 squared plus 12 times negative 8 plus 9. Okay, got to do the exponent first, so I'm going to have equals 3, negative 8 squared is 64 plus 12 times 8 is, 12 times negative 8 is going to actually be minus 96 and then plus 9. 3 times 64 is going to be what? 180, 192 minus 96 plus 9, which just equals 109. I misspoke. That's 105. I felt something's off here. Okay, so that's just a normal way of plugging it in. Now look here where it says f of 5 plus f of 2. What do we do here? Well, here, guys, I'm going to first figure out f of 5. f of 5 equals 3 times, instead of x, I'm putting 5 squared, plus 12 times. Please make sure and put it in parentheses as well, plus 9. So that's just 3 times 25, plus 60, plus 9, which is 75 plus 60 plus, and that is 144. 
Now let's figure out f of 2. f of 2 is just 3 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 plus 9. Or 3 times 4 plus 24 plus 9, which that's just 12. 12 plus 24 is 36. 36 plus 9 is 45, so this is 45. And if I'm going to add f of 5 plus f of 2 is equal to, we just figured this out, right? 144 plus 45, which just equals 189. See how we just found them both and added them together. Now let's do something similar here. Let's figure out right here. This is 4 times f of 7, so let's just figure out f of 7 which equals 3 times 7 squared plus 12 times 7 plus 9. Now I encourage you, pause these at times, work them out, and then uh, go ahead and watch this next segment. Okay, So that equals 3 times 49 plus 12 times 7 is what, 84 plus 9 times 40, 120 plus 27, 147. 84 plus 9 is 93, plus 93, or it's 147 plus 93. You probably do it in my head, but 240. So this equals 240. So then 4 times f of 7 equals 4 times 240, which should equal, I think that's 960 times 4. 960. Look at that. One last problem to try. I know, it's a lot of work, right? F of 4 simply equals 3 times 4 squared plus 12 times 4 plus 9. I'm really trying to hammer in that we just plug in whatever our function word is, that number inside the function notation is, is what we're plugging in for x. So this equals 3 times 16 plus 48 plus 9, which, what is that, 30 and 18, 48, 48 plus 50, because these two add up to 57. What's 48 plus 57? That is 105. And then f of 4 minus 7 is just 105 minus 7, which is 98. That's it. Look at that, guys. It's not too bad. All right. With that said, <coughs> peace out.